Hello again, astronomers. What do you see when you look up at the night sky? Of course, you see stars. But have you ever seen pictures or even characters from how those stars are aligned? If you have, you've done the same thing that people from ancient civilizations did thousands of years ago. If you looked at this image and saw these stars arranged in a way that resembles a picture of a ladle or pot, you just saw the most recognizable star pattern in the night sky, the Big Dipper. What you just saw is a part of a constellation or a group of stars in the sky that appear to form a pattern or picture. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to locate and identify constellations in the night sky, explain the cultural and historical significance of constellations, and describe how seasons and hemispheres affect which constellations you see. People have been noticing and creating constellations out of the stars in the sky for thousands of years. Most of the constellations that we recognize today are attributed to the ancient Greeks, but there are records that show civilizations all over the ancient world, who were all gazing up at the same night sky, created constellations as well. Roman, Middle Eastern, and African civilizations all have records of creating constellations throughout history. Constellations have been used throughout the ages to represent characters, objects, animals, and creatures from a civilization's history. They were often associated with myths and legends from the cultures of civilizations around the world. Just try to imagine a time before television, the internet, and smartphones. <gasps> People use constellations to create lore and tell stories of amazing heroes, perilous animals, and treacherous creatures that were passed down from generation to generation. The Big Dipper that you saw earlier actually isn't a constellation itself. It is a recognizable pattern with its own name, but it's smaller than a full constellation. These are called asterisms. Oftentimes, asterisms will be a smaller part of a full constellation, which is exactly what the Big Dipper is. The Big Dipper is this ladle-shaped asterism that you've likely seen many times in the night sky. But did you know that it is part of the constellation Ursa Major or the Great Bear? The Big Dipper contains seven stars, while Ursa Major contains 22. Ursa Major is often associated with the Greek legend of Callisto, who was turned into a bear by Zeus. Ursa Major is mirrored by another constellation called Ursa Minor, or Lesser Bear. Ursa Minor contains the Little Dipper asterism, and the Little Dipper contains the North Star Polaris at its tail. These two constellations were very commonly used for navigating for thousands of years due to their consistent location in the night sky. And the cup portion of the Big Dipper points directly to the North Star, so you can always spot it easily. Both Ursa Major and Minor are located relatively above the North Pole, so all you need to do is look north to spot them. The next time you're able to do some stargazing, see if you can spot the Big Dipper and use this trick to lead yourself to find Polaris. Let's take a look at another constellation. This is the constellation Orion, named after the famous character from Greek mythology, Orion the Hunter. According to myth, Orion was the greatest hunter in all the land and was placed in the sky as a constellation as a way to honor his hunting prowess. Orion contains two very prominent stars, Betelgeuse and Rigel. It is most often recognized by its very bright and visible three-star section in the middle, known as Orion's Belt. Orion is trickier to spot than Ursa Major or Minor because it is not located above the North Pole. 
As a result, it isn't always visible in the same place in the sky because Earth's tilt means we aren't always angled toward it. Which half of the Earth, or hemisphere, you are located on also affects when and where you can see constellations. As Earth orbits the Sun, different parts of the sky become visible at different times. For example, if you are located in the Northern Hemisphere, you will be able to see Orion during the winter months, but not during the summer months, and vice versa in the Southern Hemisphere. Pause the video here and take a look at some of the constellations that are more prominent in the Northern and Southern Hemispheres. Additionally, if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, you will want to look to the southwestern sky to find Orion. And in the Southern Hemisphere, he will be in the northwestern sky. When looking for Orion, keep an eye out for his most distinct feature, Orion's Belt, which is recognized as the three very bright stars in the middle of the constellation. We'll look at one more constellation in depth. The constellation Hydra covers a bigger section of the sky than any of the other 88 official constellations. Hydra has been associated with a serpent, dragon, or many-headed creature by different cultures throughout history. Hydra is thought to be first catalogued by the Greek astronomer Ptolemy and is a representation of the beast that Hercules had to defeat as one of his 12 labors. Hydra is visible from both hemispheres because it sits over the equator and stretches across both, but it is very tricky to spot because the entire constellation is composed of very dim stars. Hydra is best spotted during spring and early summer in the northern hemisphere and autumn and early winter in the southern hemisphere. It is often located by using the planet Jupiter as a guide. If you can spot Jupiter, the grouping of stars that make up Hydra's head is just south of it. Ancient civilizations developed what is essentially a map of the night sky, showing where constellations were located. This is called a star chart. They are broken into hemispheres and lay out the location of constellations and where you need to look to find them. Nowadays, you can even see these star charts right from an app on your smartphone which makes it easier than ever to spot these amazing patterns in the night sky. Thank you for joining me today for our stargazing adventures in the cosmos. Let's recap what we learned today. You now know how to locate and identify constellations in the night sky, the historical and cultural significance of constellations, and how seasons and hemispheres affect which constellations are seen and when. Be sure to complete the practice questions and extension activities that go with this lesson as you continue your journey into the universe. And always remember, you are out of this world. Hey.